Now let's look at the first one. Ronaldo's stat pads against small teams, hat tricks against Light Chainston, and two goals against Luxembourg. Wow, the best player ever. One goal against Banawan. <laughs> I don't know why I can't stop laughing when I see that. Okay, so just by looking at it, it is, it is very creative. I first have to admit it. But people who are, whoever making this a meme just have no idea about what football is. <laughs> Panama, you are like you are comparing. Panama is the team that has actually qualified for a World Cup, and they are almost close in qualifying to the 2022 World Cup, which I think they are only four points short from the Continental Playoff. And now let's not not talk about their performance in the uh, Gold Cup in which they ended up getting a uh, third place in 2015 or 2013, I don't remember. And um, and also the recent CONCACAF, no, not the recent, it's like the one before it, the 2022 to 2023 CONCACAF Nations League. They ended up getting top four. So in this case, Panama, and they also have a world ranking of around 60. So I would say Panama is actually a, at least a modest team in the world. However, Luxembourg, um, let's first now talk about that they rank 90. Before the match is, before this post is posted, Luxembourg actually doesn't have any impressive performance. Yes, you may say that they performed very well in the Euro qualifier 2024, but you must know that this post is posted during the, by the end of the second match day, which is, uh, which in the, which in the first two match days, Portugal defeat Large Tuesday and Luxembourg by a large margin of goals. Um, before the second match day, there's actually not. Pe- I mean, I don't think there's any people. Wo- any people would consider Luxembourg as a competitive team because Luxembourg is a team that, because, because like the only good performance that they have is they draw Turkey in the UEFA Nation League, and that's even League C, which is the second second lowest tie. It's not like League A or League B, it's League C. And the second one is defeating against, uh, defeating Ireland in the World Cup qualifier, 2022. But like, think about this. Turkey is a team that's always failing. Like Turkey is a team that Euro, that they often fail when they face weaker team. For example, Lat- Latvia. Via. Latvia, they, they tie Turkey so many times. I think, I think it's already four times till now. Republic of Ireland, they are having huge troubles during the first half of the qualifier, in which they can't even defeat the um, Azerbaijan uh, middle in the UEFA. So like Luxembourg's performance before the second match day of the Euro is nothing impressive. Oh, maybe I should also include their uh, draw against uh, Slovakia. But again, Slovakia also has the same problem. Like, they they also face problems when when meeting weaker team. Like they are not comfortable of getting definitely guaranteeing getting three points from the weaker team, because if they have the skill, they won't stay at League C. They won't stay at League C. So in this case, I would say, um, actually, um, considering all of those, I would say, um. Like comparing Panama to Luxembourg is just like um, yeah, showing how this person has no knowledge about football. Now let's look at the second one. Patience be like. Patience be like. Age thirty seven, farmers league. Age thirty four, also farmers league. So first of all, um. I'm definitely going to say whoever making this meme has no understanding about football, just like the previous one. You know, farmer leagues, they are all, all farmer leagues are equal, but some farmer leagues are just more equal than others. Like comparing Saudi league to PSG, it's just like comparing me to, um, who is the YouTuber that predicts? Who is, a, who is a, the famous YouTuber that always predicts Euro? I don't remember. I'm going to say like, it's just comparing me to Mr. Beast or something. Yeah. Saudi League is a league that cannot even excel in Asia. 
Yes, you may say like Al Halil, they get very impressive results, I know that. But before 2019 or whatever, Al Halil is not a, like it's a top, top team, of course, but it's not a dominating team. From 2012 to 2018, the six years difference uh, from uh, I mean from 2012 to around 2019 which is around eight years the ACL champion is always dominated by East Asian teams so basically it's South Korea Japan and China because China won the 2013 and 2015 uh, Asian Champions League and even after 2019 like we know El Halil is very strong after 2019 but do you think or do you really think that they are competitive enough once they are actually enough competitive to beat the top European league? Like, do you think they are actually better than Bayern Munich or Barcelona or Real Madrid or PSG or whatever club it is? Do you really think that? If you really think that, I would actually recommend to at least watch two football games. <laughs> I really like that com. I really like the comment below it. It's actually funny to see Ronaldo fans trying so hard to make him better, look better than Messi or Mo. I mean, I love both Ronaldo as a good player, no doubt, but saying he's better than Messi is just kind of, um, yeah. I didn't know even Saudi Arabia had a league. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a bit this is just a bit too harsh because Saudi League is actually a decent league in Asia. Like just beneath the J League. Maybe even like at the same level of J League and K League. That's just a bit too harsh. But anyhow, let's just go back to the topic. Even if we say Al Halal, even if even if we say like Al Halal is a strong enough team, let's say like Al Halal is a strong strong enough team. The other teams are just not competent with that team at all. Or maybe you can say Elnastar is Elnastar El Nastar is strong as well. But do you really think they are even close to European league to European clubs? Let's just not talk about Bayern or Barcelona. Let's just talk about some weaker teams. Serbian Red Star or like um or like Aston Villa or whatever it is. Do you really think Nassau is even close to them? Well, so that's what I'm going to say because Saudi League is just, it's not even close to the, farm, it's not even close to the PSG. It's not even close. You can, it's, it's, it's not even top league in Asia. But compared to PSG, let's, let's actually talk about PSG. I really dislike how some people just say like this league is farmer's league or shit league or whatever it is. Like, I know it's definitely quite funny they are actually using Uber Eats as their main sponsor. I know that. It's, it's quite funny. Uh, why, why I say that, I did laugh. But it's... Um, saying, French, uh, saying French is a farmer league is just another sign that you don't... You are ex either extremely biased or haven't watched football at all. Let's not first not talk about that the PSG is considered, like, I mean the French league is generally considered to be a top 5 league in the world. Um, in 2020 and 2021, when Ronaldo uh, plays in the Juventus, he, he got eliminated, he gets eliminated two times. First in 2019 by the uh, Lyon, and then in 2020 by the Ajax. Basically, um, those two teams, they are all French teams. They are all from the League One, and they are not even the top team. They are the top team. We definitely, we definitely know that the top team is PSG. But PSG did not play with the, like, like in that two years, PSG does not play with the El Nassar, El, does not play with the Juventus at the knockout stage. Um, it's like it's Ajax and Lyon. It's the uh, two teams that's even weaker than the PSG. So like I don't I, I don't want to blame Ronaldo here because you know the the fact of winning the game depends on many factors. For example, whether the coach is responsible, whether the defense line is good enough, or even luck. Like I admit that. You can't blame 
you can't blame losing the game to one person. But, like based on that, I would say like, uh, French French league is at least a competitive enough team based on their UCL results against the uh, Juventus in that two years. Uh, UCL, uh, I mean the European Champions League. Now let's look at the so like this person my final conclusion is that this person has no knowledge about football now let's pass on to the next one passy teammates down again for saudi man <laughs> this is like this is messy when he fails the 2016 Copa America. Yeah. Okay, another person who who is very biased. Okay, so first of all, I have to make a very important acknowledgement is that it, it's very irresponsible to uh, contribute the victory in like to uh, summarize the victory into like simply how one player performs very good or one player performs very bad. Because football it is a sport. It is a collaborative sport. It's involving eleven person. It's not like basketball. If if one person just strong like hell, he would, the team will win. It's not like basketball. Um, in football, there's too way too many factors deciding that. For example, refereeing, home and away, uh, coaches, the players, the defense line, the midfielders, and whatever, or maybe even luck. So like I would say it's very irresponsible to say like oh because Barcelona loses today Messi is bad he's the worst player ever you need to sell him to like Belgrade Red Star for five dollars <laughs> but if you really insist on this logic I'm definitely going to say like the fact is actually the opposite first let's actually talk about the two trophy sets he, he has 2016 euro he performs very well that thing is something that i must acknowledge he performs his individual performance is very good but you need to know that 2016 euro is it's just luck at the greatest extent it's like it's something like i bu i buy a salary and i get i uh, mean sorry i buy a um, like a lottery i get three million and then I bet them all on like Argentina went to, to Saudi Arabia and I won bigly. It's basically something as lucky as that. Um, 2016 Euro, if I don't remember, if I, if I haven't remembered it wrong, the three opponents of Portugal is uh, Austria, Iceland, Hungary. Hungary has never qualified for a Euro since like around, I don't remember what's the last time they qualified Euro, I think it's 1976 or whatever. Uh, they haven't qualified a uh, Euro for around 40 years. Iceland, it's like they just haven't, have never qualified for a Euro, they are debutant. And let's Hungary, Hungary is strong, like Hungary's uh, performance in the qualifier is just not good at all because they appear in a very easy group, a group where teams have similar skills. Like Greece is expected to top that group, but they uh, fell so bad that they even lost to Faroe Islands. And then it's Austria. Austria also hasn't qualified for two man, uh, for Euro too many times. I remember they only qualified for two or one before 2016. So like it's actually a very easy group compared to other groups. But he but like Portugal just messes up that group very bigly. They get three draws. Uh, Ronaldo's performance in some games is just very terrible. He misses the he misses a very critical chance in the first game. He misses a penalty against Austria, and then he finally performs well in the Hungary in the final match day in order for their team to qualify. And what's more hilarious is that because they get the poor place, they actually ended up like avoiding some top teams. They avoided France. They avoided Spain. They avoided Italy. They avoided, um, they, they avoided Spain, they avoided Italy, they avoid England, they avoid uh, France. I mean, they, avoid, they, they haven't avoided France, but they, are, they, they, ha they, they haven't met France until in the final. 
the in the round of sixteen, they are playing against Croatia. Croatia is definitely a good team, but like at this as the twenty sixteen World Cup, uh, twenty sixteen Euro, they are just at a development stage. So in this case, they are at the road of getting the top, and in second in eighth place. I mean, in the quarterfinal, they face Poland, which Poland is a team that's famous for being overrated. Like if you watch at their World Cup, what always happens is that they are considered to be one of the favorites, the team that definitely can ace the group stage. But what happens is that they mess up their first two games so bad, and then in the third game, they they played with dignity and won the or won the final game. That's what happened to Poland every single time. So in this case, they face Poland and they win, and then in the Semi-final. I remember they face against is Wales. Wales is a team that has never qualified for a single World Cup since nineteen fifty eight. Um. Yeah, they have never qualified one since nineteen fifty eight, and the next time they qualify would be like at twenty twenty two World Cup. So in this case, like, so I would say Portugal's experience in twenty sixteen is like more based because of luck. They are so lucky. <laughs> Like they are much more lucky than any other teams. Maybe even luckier than England in this in this Euro, because England at least he they face Netherlands in the semi finals, and at least they actually did top their group, even though they perform group in group stage, even though they perform so bad. And twenty nineteen uh, nation, uh, UFA nation league. Including this is just outright shameless because Ronaldo is not there in the group stage. Like, I don't want to say like without Ronaldo the teams performs well. I don't want to say that, but um, but like you can't say someone who is absent for the entire group stage is someone who carries the team, right? You you can't say that. I definitely had have to admit. Ronaldo he performs very well in the semi final against Switzerland, but in the final one two zero against uh one two zero they they beat Netherlands that game, that game Ronaldo actually gets the I think he is the lowest, like in terms of who scored he is the lowest ranked player in that game. Now let's talk about Messi. Um, one one thing that I definitely remember is in the twenty eighteen World Cup qualifier. At that time,、uh, Argentina is facing so many problems.、Um, Messi has is forced to be absent during the first first three games. I think first three games, and then during the middle of the game, he's banned by the Camelbo for I think it's around four games.、Um, considering because of let's、uh, after summing all those up,、uh, Messi has been absent in eight games, and during those eight games. Um, Argentina's record is one win, four draws, and three losses, and they even have some very shocking results. I mean, shocking in terms of negatively speaking. They lost zero to two to Ecuador, and then they draw two to two to Venezuela. It's Venezuela, okay? It's Venezuela. It's a team that's at that time is the weakest Camelbo team. Um. So like. And in the end, Messi has to come back. He has to in the final match day. He has to score a hat trick against Ecuador in order for Argentina to qualify. That's definitely one of the most historic moment, like one of the most memorable moment I remember about Messi. And for Ronaldo, it's just like Ronaldo scoring a、uh, scoring like three or four goals. I I, I don't quite remember against Sweden in the twenty fourteen World Cup qualify because at that time. Um, Portugal is not performing so well in the group stage of that qualifier, where they drew Israel twice, and like did did not win Russia twice. So and in the playoff they face Sweden. Sweden performs extremely well in the group stage at that time, in which they played. Uh, they drew Germany four to four, which Germany first leads four goals and Sweden then ties four of them. Um. So I would say, like Messi, he is someone who is、um, critical to his team, and you can't just 
like when we talking about how critical he is, you can't just think about it's about goals. You have to also think about how he can help other players score goals. Like when Messi is not pre present, Aguero and Di Maria, those players who can who used to score a lot, they can they just suddenly becomes unable to score. They have like. Around three or four months, where those players they just cannot score a single goal at all after Messi left. So, like you definitely see how, if you compare between those two members, I'm not saying like Ronaldo is not important to his team. I'm just saying like Messi. We can say like Messi is not important. I'm I'm not trying to defame Ronaldo. I know like he's a very good player, but you must ac also acknowledge that. Messi is the critical player for the Argentina football team. Okay, now let's talk about the next one. Holland on Blondo. I want to win five Blondo like Cristiano Ronaldo. Why not seven like Messi? I said I want to win it, <laughs> win it, not win it, not steal it. <laughs> First of all, uh, someone, it's impossible for someone to say that during a press conference. Saying that is just like, saying that is just equivalent to like I shouting in the in the campus that, like I'm the most stupid person in the world. <laughs> like like not that that that, but like someone is a stupid person in the world. It's just like that. Like Holland, I I think based on Holland's personal characteristic, he's definitely not going to be someone who say that. At least not going to be someone who say that in front of the media. In fact, I think it's already debunked as the fake news. But I really want to discuss about um, like Messi's Bluando. I I really some people are saying like his Bluando is robbed is is like he robs Bluando from other players and they like to list out a bunch of examples 2019, 2021 and 2024. My perception here is that by saying job, it's actually like when two players they have too much differences and the person who is significantly weaker than the other gets the bluando, then we will say it's robbed. But is this the case in all, all three years? In 2024, Messi has the World Cup while Holland, he just doesn't qualify at all. Like, you especially need to consider that Norway is actually not a weak team as Luxembourg. And you also need to consider the fact that some teams that's weaker than Norway also managed to get into the World Cup somehow. For example, Iceland in 2018, Bosnia and Herzegovina in 2014, and uh, maybe Greece as well. Oh, actually, no, Greece is a bit stronger. Um, so like, I definitely acknowledge getting Norway into the World Cup is hard because Norway is not a top tier team, but it's not like an impossible task. It's Norway is not like Schindberg. If you look at their previous Euro performance, Euro qualified performance, it's actually quite impressive. It's actually like even a bit impressive because in 20, in the previous one, let's just talk about the previous one, 2020 Euro qualifier. Uh, Norway actually drew the Switzerland twice. So I would actually say, like, there's actually not too much difference. Because Messi outweighs Haaland in the national team performance. And in the league performance, uh, Haaland outweighs uh, Messi. Like, but Messi is not performing very terrible, right? Messi is, uh, like, he ends up getting 20 15 goals and 15 assists, like something higher than that in the league one. He's also he's also the best uh, players in the league one who is not French, who, who is not a French people. Even though he does not perform well in the UCL, you need to consider that the team he's facing is Bayern Munich. It's not like some random weak teams in the East, Eastern Europe or something. It's not like that. So, and then let's talk about 2021. Uh, 2021, I will say it's... um. Yeah, some people are just portraying Lewandowski as someone who is significantly better than Messi. 
for people saying that, I'm just going to uh, remind you that Poland that uh, Poland did not even reach the round of 16 or, uh, or the knockout stage of the 2020, uh, 2020 Euro. Oh, we should call it as 2021 Euro because it's hosted, because it's held, it's actually played at that year. Like, it's not his fault. First of all, it's not like Lewandowski's fault because he uh, manages to score three goals and one of them in Spain. It's very impressive. But because he does not score a goal against Slovakia, which I have calculated, if he scored a goal against Slovakia, Poland would have qualified to round of 16. Yeah. Like, because he does not score a goal against Slovakia, I would say, like, Poland's, he, like, it is okay to penalize Lewandowski based on his performance in Euro 2020, even though he performed very impressive. And in terms of UCL performance, they have sim quite similar goals. They have quite similar goals scored. And I remember Lewandowski is only like quarterfinal. Lewandowski is quarterfinal and Messi is round of 16. In a like cup competition, such as the UCL, like this, this, like, a round difference. I mean, the round of 16 and round of, and the quarterfinal, it's just, there's actually not too much difference between the two. In fact, if you, if you replace Barcelona with Bayern, will you just believe that Bayern will definitely qualify? Will they think, will you think they have 100% chance to qualify? We definitely will not think that. So like, I would say there's no significant uh, difference between the two. And that's the similar case in 2019. In 2019, um, what's that called? 2019 uh, Blondo. Messi is really having a very fascinating performance in that year. He's actually the one who is, um, he actually single-headed, cadetly carried the entire uh, Barcelona team that year. And he's also the UCL top scorer. So I would say that here, and if you look at the final results, uh, Van Dijk and Messi is only seven votes. Seven votes. There's only seven votes of difference between the two. So I will actually say, um, yeah, people, whoever posts this just want to say like Messi um, wants to, Messi robs the blonde or like a goblin. It's okay if you can, if you think like that. Like, you, you can have your own opinion. Definitely, you definitely can have your your opinion. But can we just stop uh, trying to find some random celebrity and make up things and make up, and make up uh, the words he says such that to show that your opinion are way superior than us? That, like, that, that's not quite fun, it's just hilarious. Now let's look at the fifth one. Messi destroyed the PSG alone before Messi, seven French Cup in a row. After Messi, two times eliminated from round of 16 in a row. <laughs> yes. First of all, um, two things, two things I want to say in this one. First, I, I, def I already mentioned it before. Cup competition is a cup uh, is the type of competition that would allow most space that would allow like many spaces of, uh, like shocking results, because cup is not like league, where if you were in cup if you lose one game then bang you are over. And second, um twenty if you look at the PSG squad in twenty nineteen and PSG squad in 2023, you will definitely say to see that there's uh, quite a difference between the two. Um, there's actually quite a difference. So like, it's not like, oh, we buy Messi and we haven't buy any player. And when we buy Messi, the team performance is so bad. And in, uh, and in 2023, the team just gets last, PSG just gets last place in the league one and in the end has to get relegated. Not something like that. The many players change. Many players have changed in the three years where Messi is there, and like blaming Messi, um, blaming Messi is actually 
an effective mechanism if you really want that. But you will have to say, but one thing that I have to say is that by blaming him, you miss out some of the real problems that PSG has. For example, the function of Messi, Mbapp, and uh, uh, Neymar, their functions are overlapping. And second of all is that um, the defense line, the defense line of PSG is really terrible. Those two facts is like by blame. It's not like by blaming blaming Messi and asking him to get out. Those two problems can be solved automatically. It's like it's the fact that PSG is playing football like playing manager. Like PSG is managing the team like they are managing the FC Twenty Four game, which is just not a correct way of doing that. One more thing that I definitely have to mention is about um, friend how like Messi gets how people unwelcome the how PSG fans unwelcome the Messi. Um, some of the things the things I really want to say is that first, uh, PSG fans is really not being good at this point. Like let's just talk about okay, if you if you defend Messi like that now let's talk. Are you are you that good? Like let's think about this. When you defame Messi to that extent, do you really think that your fans or whatever it is is very good? PSG fans, they have the history of being like of crowd violence or something, and that also applies to the Paris population. Ten, and that that's what UN says. That's not I say it. It's the United Nations say that. Do you really think that, like in terms of your personal characteristic, do you really think that you are qualified enough to blame, to like blame Messi to that extent? Yes, I definitely know. Like there are points that he needs to be blamed. For example, missing the penalty or whatever, or like walking or whatever. But you you have to say like blaming him to that extent is just really bad to an extent with offensive. Just think about yourself, like. Just judge yourself before you judge others. Do how how much how much money do you make compared to Messi? How good your personal characteristic is compared to him? Just think about those before you actually say, talk about the state, talk about something. Let's talk about the next one. This is how Pesty won the World Cup. <laughs> Why the hell I can't stop laughing when I see that? Okay. This what this means is that <laughs> is this is this portraying him as an Arab player, like Abdullah, Mesti or something. Okay. So first of all, um, I, I'm I I can definitely say I can definitely make the I can definitely rebuttal the logic of this meme in one sentence, Qatar. Uh, gets eliminated in the group stage. Saudi gets eliminated in the group stage. Iran gets eliminated in the group stage. Period. Like, if you really think it's controlled by FIFA, they have. I mean, if you really think like the rich people from the、uh, Arabian Gulf area, they have that much power. Like, why can't they first save their own teams, right? Like why can't they first allow Qatar to qualify? Like if you look at Qatar's and Saudi's draw, Qatar's draw is literally laughable as a host because you get to pair with the Afcon champion, you get to pair with the Ecuador, is the you get to pair with one of the traditional top teams in Europe, and you get to pair with Ecuador, who is the top four, who is the top four team in the Camelbo qualifier. Like, who the? Because hosts are expected to have advantage, and if FIFA is that corrupted, they definitely can give Qatar a much easier group. Let's say, for example, let me think about one.、Uh, for example, let's say we have, let's say including Canada, who is a World Cup debutant. Let's say including the.、Um, Costa Rica, whose performance in the intercontinental playoff is literally 
terrible. Let's say um. Let me think about. Ghana, who fell last, who also performed bad in the, in the final round of the, calf qualify, a、uh, calf qualify, and except they got lucky enough, where Nigeria performs even worse. They can definitely associate puts Qatar into a much easier group if they want, and that's same for Saudi. Saudi is paired with like Argentina, Poland, Mexico. We definitely don't say Poland and Mexico is a top team, but they are like not even close to weak, right? They are not even close to a weak team. If you if if you say like those people, they are controlled by. Like FIFA is controlled by the golf rich people. Then why don't they like? Why don't they let Qatar and Saudi qualify? First of all, are they because of they are really that, like, they are they are really being very good where they literally just say, oh, I don't care about my nation. I only want Messi qualify. I only want him to qualify or something like that. This this. Just in the future, when you make memes like this, first think about logic. Use your brains, okay? Use your brains. And now let's come up to the final one. Pessi pays the referees scandal. Please give me a penalty. First of all, I'm going to, going to say a few things here. First of all. Um, penalty is actually um, not a thing. It's not like if you perform, if you get, if you score a penalty, you are a trash, trash, trash player or something. First off, and the second thing, if you watch football for any, for even less than ten games, you will know that the captain of usually the captain of a team will score the most amount of penalty than the remaining player, because he has the right to. Like he is a captain, thus he has the obligation to score the penalty, or whatever, and he has the obligation to go to go to participate in the penalty shootout. Messi, Messi, partic- always participating the penalty shootout, and he and he always come first. He always is the first person that come here saying like, I I I will kick the penalty first. Ronaldo. Doesn't choose to go first. Sometimes he go choose to go fifth. Sometimes he go cho- he chooses to go fourth. Sometimes he goes to chooses to go third. It's his choice. It's like choosing to go which position is his choice. And I and this, like choosing first place. And I can I won't judge someone just because he chooses first place. Uh, fifth he choose to be the fifth one to kick the penalty than the first one to kick the penalty. But they at least both show up during the penalty instead of just hiding. Hiding there, like waiting for their teammates to score, waiting for their teammates to like win the penalty shootout. Yeah, um. So um, and I would also like to mention that、uh, scoring a, like, if a team makes a blunder, he deserves a penalty. Sometimes it just might be a penalty is not, he he should not be awarded penalty. But again, like there are cases where players make significant blunders that they deserve a penalty. So that's the first I'm going to say, and the, a, a few more things I would like to talk about. First, there's no significant,、um, like, if you really look at the penalty that mess that is awarded to Messi, you can see that all of them are reasonable to some extent. All of them are reasonable. I'm going to say this out directly. All of them are reasonable. And, um, and second is that the ability to score a penalty in major tournaments is also an impressive result. It's not like, pen like, when you think about penalty, it's not like something where oh you eat something easy as you eat a chicken burger or something. You need to score it. There is some like random. There is some like a、uh, goalkeeper in front of you, and you need to trick him. You need to score. Without him catching it, and you need to consider that it is a crowd of under seventy thousand people. 
I know that there's many people, including many Ronaldo or Messi fans who is watching my video, they will definitely feel panic and they could not even say a fluent word even when in a in a public in a public place that's more than when they are delivering a speech in front of let's say a hundred people. Not to say that seventy thousand people. Do you know what seventy thousand people seventy thousand people represent? Like in terms of how massive they are and how if they shout the same shout the same thing, how loud and how effective it will be. Like let's talk about a, just a clear example I want always want to say George Ho. George Ho he is awarded Italy team is awarded to uh is awarded various penalties during the World Cup qualifying, including two against Switzerland. But George Ho just missed both of them. And that's the and he misses three penalties consecutively. If we consider the penalty he missed during the penalty shootout against England in the Euro twenty twenty. Like you have to know that scoring penalty first first scoring penalty is the ability. And I know people always like to joke about how Messi misses penalty. You know what? Ronaldo does that too. And Ronaldo has some critical misses as well. For example, the most recent one I can think about is the uh, is how he misses the penalty against Slovenia, uh, Slovenia in the round of sixteen. And that one is quite critical because it's at that time it's around a hundred or six minutes. It's around a hundred or five minutes um uh, ish. And um at that time it's Slovenia zero and Portugal zero. If Portugal scored one penalty and then he leads the goal to one uh Portugal one, Slovenia zero, then what happens is that Slovenia will have to change their strategy. They have to be very desperate trying to score a goal. Because there's only fifteen minutes left for them. And if they don't score they, they got eliminated. So that's why that that penalty at that time is very critical. Uh, and lastly, yeah, and I really like how people how he includes uh, Messi's crying face in the twenty sixteen Copa America. It's a very bad experience for like Argentina football team as a whole because that year they are um, they have because at that time they haven't got an international tournament win in around a uh, twenty I think it's around twenty three years since their last win in nineteen ninety three Copa America. Um it's already twenty three years of trophy left. They actually really need that trophy. So I would say it's a really bad time for Argentina at that time. But fortunately they cope with cope with it and then they success. And you know that they win the last Copa America in twenty twenty four and that's quite impressive. So overall, I uh, that's my reaction to all of the like the pesty memes that I just found out, and because of the strong demand, I will definitely make another video reacting to uh Panado memes. Yeah, that marks the end of this video. Thank you so much. I have a nice day.